Ashley, would you please call the roll? Call on the roll, Ms. Conwell. Ms. Conwell is absent at the moment. Mr. Jones? Here. Here. Ms. Here Brown? Not. Here. Mr. Miller? Here. Ms. Stevens? Ms. Stevens is absent at the moment. We have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, Ashley, has anyone signed in for public comment? No, Mr. Chair, no one has signed in. I, I was a little worried when I didn't see Ms. Lou right off of the bat. You know, <laughs> it was good to see you here. <laughs> did, did you get ample opportunity? All right, no public comment. All right, at this moment, uh, I'd like a, a motion to approve our minutes from our November 6th meeting. I so move. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Eyes have it. The minutes are approved. All right, well, we have a, several items, four items on our agenda today. Uh, would someone like to come to speak to our, our first matter? Mr. Chair, you want me to read it into the record? Please do. Okay. <laughs> I'm rusty. Resolution number 2019-0257, authorizing amendments to agreements and contracts with various providers for various programs and services for the Cuyahoga County Fatherhood Initiative for the period 1-1-2018 to 1231-2019 to extend the time period to 1231-2020 and for additional funds. Thank you. And before we begin, do we need uh, to um, have a motion to excuse our absent members or is that not necessary in committee? That's up to you. It's up to you? What would you say, Dale? You are right. it's, it's not necessary in All committee. Right. All right. Thank you. Al, you, you may continue. Sure, I repeat, I'm Al Grimes, director of the Cuyahoga County Fatherhood Initiative from the Office of Human Services. Good afternoon. Um, these contract amendments on the agenda today represent the programs to be funded by the Cuyahoga County Fatherhood Initiative from January 1st through December 31st of 2020. There are a variety of programs designed to assist fathers with meeting both the financial and emotional needs of their children. They range from job training and placement to a boot camp for dads at nine hospitals, the assuring that fathers stay involved in the academic lives of their children in K-8 schools, to a prevention of premature fatherhood program for teens to deter them from being fathers until they are financially and emotionally ready. These amendments will allow us to continue to serve fathers and families of Cuyahoga County in a much needed and critical capacity. Our mission is to significantly increase the number of fathers who are involved in nurturing and raising their children. Research has shown that when fathers are involved, children are less likely to drop out of school, become incarcerated, use drugs, commit crimes, and become teen parents along with other issues. When fathers are involved, children live a more healthy and productive life. All right, are there any questions from the committee? I have a question. Councilman Miller. This is, uh, this is one that the chairperson might ask, but, uh, but I'm going to ask it, which is that if not, not including the people that you touch uh, through the annual convention that you mm -hmm. hold, uh, not including those, how many fathers do we uh, serve in one way or another mm -hmm. through all of these programs in a given year? Okay, in a given year, we serve about 6,000 fathers through our funded programs. We have another 600 to come to our fatherhood conference. Uh, and then we, all, we also have our Fathers Walk to School program, which has become, become huge, which is 20,700 dads. So at one point or another, we touch about $28,000, 28,000 fathers and children throughout the year. So 6,000 through the 11 funded programs. Okay, thank you. Any further questions? There are no questions. Uh, Al, we, we know your program very well. Uh, you've been serving for many years, so I actually don't have any questions of you at this time. Uh, at this moment, uh, we could have three readings. Did you have any requests for, yeah, regarding the readings? Yeah, uh, so that we can get make sure that we get, get these um, completed in real 2019 to start um, effective January 1st. I would ask that we suspend the second reading and um, approve, the, um, approve the amendments after the first reading. I make a motion that we uh, approve the res uh, resolution under a second reading suspension. Is that your second. request? Moved and seconded. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank aye. you very much, council members. All right. Thank you.
Ask you if you would read the next item into the record. Resolution number 2019-0258, authorizing an amendment to a master contract, which includes numbers AG1800149, AG1800150, and CE1800376 through CE180079 with various providers for the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, SNAP, program for the period 8-6-2018 to 9-30-2019, to extend the time period to 9-30-2020, to change the scope of services effective 10-1-2019, to add various new providers effective 10-1-2019, and for additional funds in the total amount not to exceed $724,893. Welcome, please state your name for the record. <clears throat> uh, my name is Paul Bounds. I'm a Deputy Administrator with the Cuyahoga Department of Job and Family Services. And with me is Deanna Boswell. Thank you. Good afternoon, Council. Uh, my name is Deanna Boswell. I'm a Center Manager and I manage the 50-50 reimbursement program. All right, great, I'm gonna get started. I'm going to present on the SNAP to Skills Employment Training Contract Amendment and a little bit about SNAP to Skills or SNAP to Skills Employment Training, or sometimes we call it SNAP ENT. It provides participants access to skill gains through training or work experience to increase their ability to obtain regular employment that leads to economic self sufficiency. States and thus counties are required to operate a SNAP ENT program. Uh, these programs are funded through the Federal Office of Food and Nutrition Services and provides the funding to administer all SNAP ENT programs. In Cuyahoga County, our model emphasizes education, job search, job readiness, employability skills, development, occupational skills development, and employment opportunities. Currently in Cuyahoga, we contract with six providers towards employment, Cuyahoga Community College, the Centers, El Barrio, Newbridge, Youth Opportunities Unlimited, and Cuyahoga County Public Libraries Aspire to deliver our SNAP ENT services to our providers. The purpose for today's amendment are twofold. One is to allow and ask for an extension for an additional program year to uh, allow our providers to serve our SNAP recipients to deliver the SNAP ENT uh, deliverables. And secondly, we're seeking to add three additional providers um, to the service agreement. And the three providers are Lutheran Metropolitan Ministries, Spanish American Committee, and the Westside Catholic Center. Um, the desire to add the additional providers uh, allow for more flexibility to serve our clients. Uh, the new providers are able to offer different training options, locations, and locations for our clients. Uh, the Spanish American Committee, who has a history of serving the Hispanic community, offers unique, uh, uh, excuse me, unique options within the construction trades. LMM has experience working with individuals who have criminal backgrounds. The Westside Center and LMM also have experience working with the homeless population. So adding these three additional providers gives us the ability to better equip and serve high-risk populations. So Deanna's gonna talk a little bit about the providers that we wish to add. Oh, with, L with LMM, Luther Metropolitan Ministries, um, they have a um, general program with safety course, hospitality and culinary arts. Um, individuals can go twofold. If they have a high school diploma or GED, they're able to move on to an associate applied science at Kent State University. If they don't have a high school diploma or GED, they're also able to obtain a certificate um, for their services with the culinary arts. Spanish American Committee, um, they offer programs with the Latino um, construction and English as a second language. And um, Westside Catholic Centers, they are offering um, workforce development cert certification, food service manufacturing, and they also have just um, have a social enterprise because they open up a, a pizza shop in that area next to where they provide their services. So, council members, we uh, ask that you uh, seek to approve our amendment and uh, move forward to answer any questions. Excellent. Any questions from the committee? Yes. Councilwoman? Just curious, in previous uh, uh, funds that were um, not to exceed, are these dollars specified for each entity or can they be adjusted as needed? Uh, they can be adjusted. So for this uh, program, we utilize a master contract agreement. So the dollar amount is awarded to the um, overall contract. Now we did through our process for our, our providers ask that they identify the number of people they wish to serve and therefore identify the actual dollar amount that they may use. However, they underspend or overspend, we have the ability, flexibility to realign dollars as needed which we've done in the past, by the way. And then um, can you share with us the, the total number of anticipated uh, 
the number of people that you anticipate will be impacted by this additional, these additional funds? Sure, absolutely. So we're expecting to serve roughly around 960 some odd people. That was a projected number. Uh, now that's based on capacity of the customers that each provider can serve. Obviously that number can increase as we see fit. The final question is the Luther Metropolitan uh, Ministry, is, uh, is that exclusive to men? Or no, the program. Okay, all right. That's it is not. Yeah, okay. If you want to chime in, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it is not. Okay, all right. Thank you very much. And just as a, just as a set aside, if you've had a chance to visit the uh, Virginia Brown Building, uh, Luther Metropolitan Ministries operates the uh, cafe on the top floor. Um, so th their customers, and this is a pre-release program, so the customers are there. So you have an opportunity to actually see them engaging, serving uh, our customers in the, in the population and community. Just a little historical perspective, uh, under uh, Luis Vasquez, uh, the director of the Office of Reentry, or well, going back to our original uh, first year in office, um, this was a social entrepreneurship initiative, the Central Kitchen, out of Lutheran Metropolitan Ministries. So it has grown over the years to serve the reentry population. And, and that model is a little different than what we would traditionally do. We would give towards employment X amount of dollars just in this contract and others. But with uh, Lutheran Metropolitan Ministries, they were given an initial contract in the years past to start the Central Kitchen as a business. And they were given no additional dollars after that. But they were there to provide food services to the homeless, uh, uh, homeless centers, shelters in the community, and apprentice the reentry population uh, at that time. So the business was in place. It made its income from its revenue as a business. So with that, they needed no additional help. But every year that they uh, uh, apprenticed the population, uh, it gave us a better return on our dollar. So as long as they've been in business, so we continue to look at their, their private law statements, and, uh, and they're, they're doing well, and they continue to do well. And those initial dollars have, have been a, a very good return on the people's tax dollars for the many of individuals that have been served. And, and we've watched Central Kitchen grow uh, to become uh, uh, what it is today. So it's an excellent, excellent program. And that was a county council initiative. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Councilman Miller, you had a question? I do. This uh, new contract was supposed to go into effect on 10 one and and we're almost at the end of November, and, and it's coming to us now. Can can you explain uh, what the holdup is and... and uh, and tell us whether uh, any services are currently being provided and if so, how they're being paid for and where are we on that? Thank you. Certainly, no problem. Thank you for the question. Um, so in terms of explaining the delay um, and kind of lay it out in terms of how we prepare for this project, um, in July, we started the process to look for the modifications. So what we did at that point was we contracted the Office of um, contract management to start to process and then we developed our original draft for the modification and that was submitted and that was amended um, submitted through excuse me a uh, uh, matrix civil I think that's the term whatever the electronic system they use to track contracts within our contract management system so by August we had developed a, a draft we had developed a model and we reached out to our new providers as well as our current providers to ask for documentation which was required through our contract management uh, protocol uh, documents such as uh, independent contractor forms, I-9 insurance forms, those types of things. Where we ran into a delay was uh, within the month of September where we were seeking um, imposing deadlines on providers to provide that documentation which was required to uh, accompany the amendment. So that really led to our delay. Um, we, with our new providers, they weren't quite certain as to what we needed, so there was some lack of clarity, which we hope to resolve for our next contract term. Um, but that was the delay. The second part of the question in which our service is being delivered, um, um, yes, um, our contract, although it did officially end in September, there are carryover dollars which will allow us to provide some delivery services. The request of adding the three new additional providers, they have not uh, been added. They have not been active, nor have they received uh, referrals from our agency to serve clients. So for those who are currently in the, uh, in the program as they're winding down, there are reserved dollars which were not spent down during a previous contract year which were able to cover those costs. So are you saying that there was money left over in, in the contracts for the existing providers and that you, you've been using that money to continue to provide services pending approval of this contract? That's correct, yes. Oh, okay. 
So it sounds like uh, we definitely want to get this one passed on November 26th. Any further questions from the committee? If not, would you like to make the motion? Yes, uh, I'll move to refer. Do you have any questions? Yeah, I'm actually um, similar to Mr. Grimes. We're also seeking to uh, to suspend additional re uh, readings, so to expedite the process. Right, that was my intention. Here. We're on the especially, same page, especially on this one, mm -hmm. since we're already into the contract I'll time. Mr. Miller, you and I think in the same way. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to make a motion to refer resolution 2019-0258 with recommendation to council leadership to put it up for passage on second reading suspension on November 26th. That's next Tuesday for final passage. So, Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ashley, if you read the next item into the record. Resolution number 2019-0259. Authorizing an amendment to contract number CE1700230 with Emerald Development and Economic Network for the Rapid Rehousing Program for homeless individuals and families for the period 1 1 2018 to December 31st, 2019, to extend the time period to December 31st, 2020, and for additional funds in the amount not to exceed $1,391,325. Welcome. Good afternoon, uh, Ruth Gillette, Office of Homeless Services. Um, I've given you a handout that has sort of the salient um, facts about this contract amendment. The total uh, dollar increase is $1.391 million. There are two funding sources for this award. Uh, one is through the uh, Federal Continuum of Care grant award to Cuyahoga County in the amount of $732,555 and a federal award to the City of Cleveland through their Emergency Solutions Grant Program, which they then sub-award to the Office of Homeless Services for this purpose in the amount of $658,000. $770. Both of those grant awards uh, have uh, award terms of November the 1st, 2019 through October 31st, 2020. Um, rapid rehousing is uh, an initiative that is uh, 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 promoted through the HEARTH Act, um, and the U.S. Interagency Council on Homelessness has really encourage continuums of care to focus their efforts so that homelessness will be rare, uh, that it'll be brief, and that it will not reoccur. Um, so the brief approach to when someone is experiencing a housing crisis is facilitated through using rapid rehousing dollars. And what this enables our community to do is to provide a short-term rental assistance to um, in our community for families, uh, single adults, uh, young adults, and uh, youth-headed households. Um, in addition to the actual rent assistance, um, uh, people are provided uh, someone who helps them find housing, a housing locator, uh, while they're in shelter. Um, uh, it pays for an inspection of the unit a unit so that it would pass what's called, what's called housing quality standards, which is a HUD minimum livability standard. Uh, it also provides funding for case management to the household while they're uh, receiving the rent assistance. The notion is that that case management is focused on um, helping the household uh, develop and sustain income so that when the short-term rent assistance uh, time is up, the family will be able to continue to, to stay in the unit. In our community, we utilize what's called a progressive engagement model. Um, and so uh, I've given you that little chart. So for young adults and families, every household receives six months of rent at 100% rent. If, after that point, they're not stable, they can be extended 
uh, for three more months where the program would continue to pay 75% of the rent and the household would pay 25%. And if they're still not stable at that point, they could be extended another three months, and the, uh, but the amount of subsidy would decline. That way people can kind of, you know, uh, make sure that we're not pulling the rug out from underneath them and that when the rent assistance is over, they will be able to sustain the rent on their own. For single adults, it's a little different because, um, well, because they're single adults. Uh, they're offered four months of assistance um, at 100% rent and uh, additionally two months at 50% of rent. The real goal is to not leave people in a lurch so that at the end of that assistance that they would be coming back into um, homelessness. Um, the second attachment there are some outcome, is outcome data for, um, from January 1st through the end of October for this program. And it's broken out by families, adult families, youth families, single adults, and youth singles. So, uh, and the top box uh, shows a comparison between the number of households that were served the same time frame in 2018 versus uh, 2019. And so you can see that in total, uh, there were 821 households that have been uh, served through this program um, uh, so far this year. And then it, some sort of finer detailed uh, information is provided. Um, so I'm happy to answer any questions. Michael Dowd, who's the um, uh, Chief Operating Officer for Eden, is here if there's uh, more technical questions that you have about the program. All right, are there any questions from the committee? Yes. Councilman Miller. The legislation talks about extending from 1231-2019 to 1231-2020, but when you talked about the two funding sources, you seem to be talking about a contract time that ended sometime inside the year. Can you explain what the difference is between those two? Right. And to the chair, to Councilman Miller, um, so this activity in our community actually has uh, three sources of funding, and the third funding source comes from the Ohio Development Services Agency, ODSA, um, and we will be receiving an award from them, uh, which I haven't gotten official notice of yet, and so we haven't appropriated the money, but that grant will start January 1st, and so I will be amending the contract when those funds are available. And those funds uh, will be available through the end of 2020. So I thought, might as well just round it up to, to that at this point. OK, fine. Thank you. Any further questions? If not, do you have any, do you have any need for any special reading? Um, as, as you can see, the. Uh, so this is an amendment, so the contract is ongoing. Um, it would be beneficial for the funds to be available as of November the 1st for the agency because previous funding from these two sources did expire Octo uh, October 31st. So if we could suspend and pass at the next, or at least, yeah, as soon as possible would be great. I'll make a motion that we move this legislation to the full council under second reading suspension. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Thank you. And Ashley, if you read our next item. Resolution number 2019-0260, authorizing the contract with the Salvation Army in the amount not to exceed $538,941 for the past rapid rehousing program for single adults in the connection in connection with fiscal year 2018 continuum of care homeless assistance grant competition for the period 10-1-2019 to September 30th, 2020. Thank you. Um, I, I, again, provided a data outcome sheet for your information on this program. 
Um, it, it, as uh, Ashley indicated, it's 100% federal funding uh, grant award to Cuyahoga County. Um, the PASS program provides 75 um, beds for uh, single adult males. Um, these are always fully utilized. The referrals come through the coordinated entry system. Uh, the program focuses on uh, recovery support uh, while connecting clients with housing and sustainable income. In the uh, program year of October 1, 2018 through September 30th, 2019, uh, over, well, 265 unduplicated individuals were assisted. Uh, during that time frame, 193 uh, men left the program. Um, I've highlighted in yellow that 88% of those exits were to positive uh, permanent housing type exits. Only 5% uh, of people exited that program back to shelter, which is um, uh, you know, within the time frame of when they were actually leaving the program. 55% um, uh, of those who exited, exited with cash income, which is also a good metric for, um, for the population. And 77% uh, of those exited uh, having access Medicaid benefits, which is also a great benefit to, for people to be connected with. So, uh, Bo Hill, who's the director of Harbor Light, which is where the PASS program is located, is here. If you have any other questions or other information that you'd like about the program. Okay. I see the 75 bid, is that full capacity? Fully utilized? Yes. Is there a waiting list? Um, so people are, um, men who... A uh, waiting list. It's, they're at the 2100 Lakeside. So when there's an opening at the PASS program, someone in one of the... There's a, pass, there's a community at 2100 Lakeside called Passages. And Passages is really for men who are working on recovery. And so it's a more of a community at 2100. And then uh, when they when when there's an opening in the past program, uh, it's filled with someone from 2100. Gotcha. Okay. Any questions from the committee? Yes. Councilman Miller. So this contact extension was supposed to start on 10 one 2019. So what caused it to be this this far late? and, and uh, how our service is being provided. Uh, through the chair to Councilman Miller, um, because the federal funds, so, you know, actually this award came from the 2018 uh, federal competition. Um, we received a letter in January that said, congratulations, you've gotten the money, but we don't actually get a grant agreement until much later in the year. And so there's a process where um, you know the money has to be appropriated, and then uh, then we can initiate the um, the contract. Um, and so that's a delay. And then uh, the Salvation Army's structure is that they everything has to be sent to their New York headquarters, and then that adds a delay. And so um, that's why these end up being. We're generally behind the eight ball on the federal awards. And uh, how do we provide the services without right. having the money? To the councilman, um, through the chair. So this is a significant amount of money, obviously. However, it's not the full funding for this program. So the Salvation Army... Um, more than matches these dollars. And so there's funding to continue the activities while our money is being added to the, to the resource. I presume we don't want the situation to go on any longer than necessary. And, and I, so I, I presume you're requesting yes. second reading suspension. Is that correct? That would be much appreciated. Okay. Any further questions? If I'll make not, a motion. Yeah. I'll make a motion to recommend resolution 2019-0260 with recommendation for second reading suspension. Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. Ayes have it. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome, Ruth. All right.
At this time, is there any miscellaneous business? No. All right. Well, if nothing else holds our attention, our uh, committee meeting is adjourned.